Okay, speed. And go. No, you're Tolkien-esque pages describing the history of the pup and who killed it. Yes. Yeah. Pop. Okay. Oh, I only had one clap. <laughs> Discussion. Discussion. Camera one recording. Oh, dude. Did you ever disappear into your imagination as a poker and a boy? <laughs> <laughs> by another space pirate, his captive, and ultimately defeated by himself. And that is the most diplomatic way I could put this. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start with first impressions. So, Matthew, you're first. Alright, um, I found the book to be a fairly easy read. Um, the last couple of books I've been reading uh, Peter Drucker about management and stuff, so I mean, comparatively, this is an easy, <laughs> <laughs> it's an easy read. Um, <laughs> it's a it's a short book, about 200 pages, so it's it's not a, not like a Tom Clancy novel or the like. Um, honestly, I found the cast was a little thin, and it was uh, took me a little while to get into the book. Um, but uh, <laughs> like 199 pages. <laughs> <laughs> took took me a bit. Um, but you know, um, as as uh, yeah, anyhow, it just. Had a little bit that I was looking for that I didn't quite have. I'll say yeah. the, the first impression. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, in theory, yes, it was a short read. I read it in one morning in like two and a half, three hours or something. But 200 pages <coughs> is still too long when it's you know 200 pages of rape and Stockholm syndrome. So really, how much can you say about that? That's just you just don't want to read it. It's like everything, the entire story happened in the first two chapters, and then the next 15 chapters, we're talking about those first two chapters. <laughs> <laughs> the snowplow agrees with me! It's just gonna run down all the copies of this book and shred it, get rid of it. Blah. No. Uh, yeah, I had a hard time with this book as well. Um, it is a short read and uh, a really easy read. The language is super simple. But the story was explained in the first two chapters and then every chapter that followed was unnecessary description of rape. Um, and then around about a page, 164 of 200 pages is when I started going, yeah, okay, now it's starting to get interesting because yeah. that's when they started talking about how Angus was outwitted. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that which should have been chapter three. Which should have been yeah. That <laughs> was really interesting. The rest of it was just completely unnecessary and eye roll worthy and relying on all kinds of ridiculous tropes that I just uh, and just kind of made you nauseous after a while. Yeah. I was like yeah. I think it was at about chapter ten where I'm like, why do I just feel sick? Oh, because I've been reading ten chapters of this. This is yeah. just just make it stop, please. Like just yeah. skip ahead to where <clears throat> things actually happen. Yeah. And I know you're gonna hate this, but in a lot of ways, it kind of made me feel the way I felt while watching Sucker Punch. <laughs> <laughs> no, fair it's like, just, just, just make it end. Just something, something happened. And it was the same kind of thing, but I, by the end, I was like, I was so disengaged and just kind of numb to it. I'm like, okay, so she gets away. Well, that's well, nice. I, I, think, I think a lot of the, um, a lot of the aspect when you're reading a book, uh, when you have a, a small cast and you're looking at, through the perspective of main characters, you want something you can identify with the main character with. I really couldn't identify with the guy. No, 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 no. It, it, he was, no, 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 no way. No, no. even in the bit where I think you were supposed to start feeling sorry for him was when he was, as a youth, chucked in that, uh, what was it? Home for the Youths, where mm. he was supposed to. Oh, I did. Let's see, like, I already forgot about that. Yeah, well, see, here the thing is, he was put in with a really good guy who was really trying to help him out, and, and then he did something 
<coughs> shitty to this really good guy and ended up in a shitty situation and that made him a shitty human being, like, as an adult. But the whole time I'm like, well, you deserved it. <laughs> I have no sympathy for this character whatsoever. The, the, I think the part where I felt something close to sympathy for him um, was when he got the news that his ship was being dismantled. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, Captain Al. <laughs> but, but see, you know what I realized it was? It wasn't sympathy for him, it was sympathy for the ship. I'm like, that ship deserved a better fate. It deserved a better captain. I will take you on. I will make everything better. This is such a bad end for, like, look at what that ship endured. Yeah. She endured better. Yeah. She deserved better. I, I, do have, sad. I do have to say, while there is a lot of the rape that is involved with Morn um, on with uh, uh, Angus, Angus that uh, did to her. Um, it's not as descriptive on that aspect as, say, for example, anyone that's read any novel by uh, Stig Larson, The Girl with the Dragon. Uh, yeah. I haven't read those yet, but I intend to. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, they're very thorough yes. on that kind of thing. I so, did appreciate that. <laughs> um, and that, that's obviously sold bucket loads, um, making his, uh, his, his family since he's dead very but, much. But yes. in, in this case, they did. Um, he did uh, skip over the descriptives of, of the rape itself to to a large extent, and for that, I'm thankful for. Yes. But I am. But, but see, the you extent get... of the rape going on for 12, 13, 14 chapters just was get so repetitive. The thing about necessary. yeah, and the thing about the Steve Larson books is there's more to them. Mm. There's more story to them. Yes. Whereas in this, mm. that was all that was going on. Uh, yeah, I do also have to say, if it was stomach churning, you were aiming for. Um, Mission accomplished. But you can do it in a sentence. And they did. And it was like in the Lovely Burns, for example. Oh god. Yeah, yeah. Oh. There is one <clears throat> sentence and I will remember it to this day, and it is but the end came, came anyway. anyway. And that one sentence, I was like well, Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it and had a deeper impact in one sentence than this guy managed with fifteen 18 chapters. chapters. <laughs> yeah. It uh yeah. the Lovely Burns was awful. Yeah, it was pretty oh. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was a horrible story. There might have been a reason. Now, my roommate has one of the original copies, and she doesn't have the afterword um, from the author in, in it. Uh, but there's oh, the, I do have yeah. the, the afterword. Now, I, I have a couple bones to pick about this. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple. <laughs> Just a couple. I have things to say about this. <laughs> okay, look, if you write a book and you have to explain the book, Yes. With the afterword, they you're not done your job afterward. as a writer. Yes, that was my that was my biggest beef. If you rec it's a 41 page afterward. The story is not even 200 pages if you include all the blank pages between the chapters. <laughs> exactly. If you need a quarter of your story in the afterword, you haven't done your job. The and story should explain the story. So yeah. he he explains in the afterword how it's originally meant to be a novella, just a little short yeah. story. So obviously this is beyond a novella, it's thick enough. It sat around after he completed it um, for about 10 years, I believe he said in, in the uh, afterward, and it had gone through revisions in his word about six times. Maybe there's a reason. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe there's a reason it took 10 years to put to print. Uh, there, is, there is promise to the book. I could say that there is potential to it if he had expanded beyond it. I think. Yeah. I think Which he does in subsequent books, I think, but I'm not interested. I, yeah, by the time you get through this one, you don't want to read the rest of them. So you're like, well, that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> now, correct me if I'm wrong here. Now, I can, I can remember um, you have uh, Angus, you mm -hmm. have uh, Nick Sokoso, mm -hmm. you have um, Morn, mm -hmm. yeah. and you have her father, Captain whatever. I his, yeah. Yeah. So you, you have four named Two lines. You have four named characters. One of those really doesn't count his father. Yeah. Um, for book quantity. <clears throat> what other named characters are there in the book? Well, pretty much all. Sick. <laughs> I mean, they, be a character. <laughs> there's, there's. She you know, talks about her mother, but her mother never actually shows up. Like, there's no. There's, but did you get the mother's name? I don't remember the mother's name if it was mentioned. I don't know. So it's a very thin book, and I think if he had of expanded on that so that the rape and that wasn't the main focus of the book, that, yeah. <clears throat> that there was more there, the book could have had potential. It was like Fifty Shades of Grey in space. <laughs> God, because it's not bad enough already. <laughs> with less consent. With less consent. With less consent. <laughs> but none of that happened. No, he didn't expand on it. There was no expansion of the cast. Yeah. There was no expansion of the book beyond the 
those chapters. Yeah, and, but he said in his um, afterward, after I got over the fact that he compared himself to Wagner. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> I was like, oh, but <laughs> the grander. Yeah. <laughs> You're adorable. Um, uh, he did say that he was trying to turn the archetypes on their heads so that the the villain becomes the victim and the rescuer, and the victim becomes the rescuer and the rescuer becomes the villain. He never got there. That's yeah. not what I took away from the book at all. And he did mention that's what he was trying to do, and I can kind of sort of see how he tried to do it, but he made more so much the victim that no yeah. amount of agency she has after this will ever take that away from her. Right. And also, you know, the fact that he needed 40 pages to explain what he was trying to do. Yeah, again, again. you're just like, yeah. well, you've got issues. But what I thought, I just, I found the afterword so much more compelling than the entire <laughs> story. Like, what I liked about the afterword that I thought was interesting was the part where he was talking about um, how he was, like, embarrassed and scared when he was writing it because he was identifying so much with Angus and he felt like if, he, if people read it, then people would know his true self and stuff like that. I'm like, see, that's an interesting story. The story of this writer who's writing this character he, he identifies with, but at the same time he's so disgusted by that he's ashamed. I'm like, why don't you make that the story? I would read that. That'd be a great movie. That's a good story. The one you wrote was crap. Yeah. Reverse it. Make the story the afterword, and then I won't read it, and then we're good. There are a, a couple of things that I liked about the book that I wish he had spent more time on. Like, I really liked how he, everybody was missing everybody else's motives. They were all operating under assumptions of everybody else's motives that were entirely incorrect. Right, yeah. And if he had expanded on that a bit more, it could have been way more interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And some of Warren's um, memories. Yes were really interesting. Her backstory was Her backstory was quite good. I think there's also potential in the story too. There's a point in the book now, hopefully I don't disclose the whole time, but it's only two hundred. There's pages, really not so, that much to disclose. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a, a point rape. where yeah. yeah. But there's a point in the in the novel where um his his words are harsh and he's very aggressive towards her, but um, you know, as is from his perspective, he can see in her eyes her question because his words are this way but his touch is gentle. And she's starting to identify, I guess, a bit with him, perhaps a bit of the Stockholm Syndrome. Rage, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, for, for a writer, there's possibility of potential there to expand beyond that. But he ruins it. He slugs her and he decks her. And anything that he's been working to accomplish, anything that has been accomplished in establishing any amount of um, relation, with with her, anything that she can understand him, understand him, with, is destroyed in in him hitting her again. In the last uh, what was that forty pages to the end, something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, and and then he's all sad, and you're like, oh, you poor asshole. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but if you wanted to expand on the story, if you wanted something more than that, if you wanted more than the atypical, then you could have moved. With that, yes, but he didn't, and therefore, he he, the, any potential that he had in the story was kind of lost at that. I yeah, think. it it seemed to me at that point that he was trying to build sort of a sympathy for the main character. <laughs> well, but yeah, again, that really work. Yeah, I know, right? Again, even if it's even if you rape someone gently, it is still rape. <laughs> it really got on my nerves that he was trying at that. Yeah. And especially, I mean, yeah. I mean, by that point, you're again. Forty pages away from the end, there's it, there's just been so much by that point that you're just like, well, yeah, exactly. I don't care what happens to you. I just yeah. wish you'd kind of keel over, drop dead, maybe rats would eat your eyeballs. Yeah. Out. You're fat and greasy, have a heart attack, and let's get this over. You just, yeah, just, just end this book already. You've yeah. just been ten chapters trying to ex explain from his perspective why he's so angry and ragey and grr and hates everyone. Mm -hmm. But it's all his own fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. None of it. Yeah. No, none of it made me feel sorry for him. I'm sorry. No. He was just he sorry, was not just sorry. Really, really kind of despicable. Yeah. Yeah. Right from the. See, and for that reason, I think Nick would have made a way more compelling villain. Because he had an interesting story. Because he had a really interesting story. And an Eagle Montoya story. Yeah. Pretty much. About having his heart shredded and scars on his face, and the person who gives him scars on his face laughs at him and disappears. Yeah. And then he goes on a quest for the six wounded men. 
woman. Or, yeah. <laughs> Who broke his heart. See, he would make a much more compelling victim, uh, victim, uh, villain than Angus ever could. He'd make just, you know, doesn't even matter, hero or villain or whatever. Character! Yes. He has a character <laughs> other than rah, 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 bleh, like. So it, it's like you ladies have mentioned, there have been a couple of perspectives that could have made potentially for more story about the uh, Nick and the woman or. Um, and, and the like, but he, the, the author was, was saying that he wanted to turn things on the head and to take a different perspective. All right? He, he did that? No. It didn't work. No. no did Sorry. not work. Sorry, the victim will always be the victim. She was too much of a victim for her to ever yeah, shut down. He couldn't pull her out of that. No. Angus will always be the villain because he was just the worst shit on the face of the planet. The most unsympathetic person I think I have ever read, yeah. which is saying a lot. I mean, there are authors who have done what he tried to do and done it so much better. George R. R. Martin in uh, The Song of the Fire. No, no, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, I swear to God, no. by the end of uh, book four, I think it was, I liked Jamie Lannister. No, I, still I refuse. Hating him. And then by the end of the series up until now, I'm like, you know, he might be a child killer, but he's actually not that bad. <laughs> I don't know you anymore. <laughs> I stopped reading the books because everyone's like, you're going to love Jamie. I'm like, no, I, I refuse. So That's not why you stopped reading the books. The Shut up! That's why I'm reading I don't still read that part. <laughs> I threw the book across the room at that part. Uh, but yeah, George R. R. Martin is one of those authors who manages to make uh, black and white not quite so. And on a much more... Um, Childish slash my reading level than George R. R. Martin, uh, Snape, oh, yes. Voldemort, Snape, yes, and then yeah. By the end, I was feeling very sorry for Voldemort. You, yeah, you do. Although I had guessed it's Snape. Wait, I, everybody <laughs> guesses it's Snape. Every guess it's Snape early, but I mean it was still good the way that was done. That was yes, exactly. exactly. So much more successful. Than so this. I mean, it, like it's it's entirely possible to make sympathetic villains. Stephen R. Donaldson just really is incompetent in that. <laughs> At least not in 200 pages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, this is the first book of quite an expansive series, I understand. Four or five? Yeah. yeah. Five? five? Five. We're getting five yeah. from the peanut From the guy. expert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the other books are much thicker, too. Yeah, I was going to say, my little brother loves the series. Oh, God. And the books get really, really thick. So I think perhaps in those later books, he manages it, but not in one. And I can't, I can't read the rest of the series after this book because I just hate Angus so much. Yeah. yeah. Um, this, is, this is gonna be, you know, a very uneducated and kind of stupid question. Is that how, you know, how you generally spell Thermopylae? As in the Battle Lord? Yeah. I think so. I've been spelling Thermopylae wrong my whole life. How do you spell it? I spelled it P-O-L-E, not P-Y-L-E. Oh, maybe it is a, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, that was just a question I had. We I wasn't put that. I was <laughs> like, <laughs> Please, if you know, comment down below. <laughs> Who can spell We are going to get a whole bunch of angry classes. <laughs> <laughs> how the hell do you not know how to up a <laughs> Well, it's funny because you're usually that angry classicist. <laughs> no, I'm a classicist. Oh, yeah, well, you, I'm, but I'm you, usually, you usually have comments about, you know, what it's yeah, we do. Yeah. I usually have ancient You just, you moments. know stuff. Um, <laughs> um, I was very glad that Nick and Angus had that little exchange where they clarified how to pronounce his name, because I was like... Well, that, that's not how... Oh, wait, yes, Angus does correct him, sorry. Yeah. Because all I'm thinking is thermo, thermo pile. Yeah, because when, when Angus, when they're leaving, and Nick says thermopile, and Angus is like, it's thermopylae. I'm like, oh, well. And, and again, I think that's timing thing. That was, what, 60 pages to the end? <laughs> yeah, it was like right in that whole. Also, thermopile, how primary school is that? That, that really irked me. I'm like, really, Nick? You're like a swashbuckling pirate, and the best thing you can come up with is thermopile? <laughs> what are you, in grade six? Well, you know, you can't have issues. So, good news, good news or bad news, I guess, is I went looking for the book and I couldn't find it. I found it out of print, so I had to get it on my cobalt here. Um, oh so, my god, that's tiny. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, feel free. Where's this little cobalt? Uh, uh, on the good end or the bad end, it's out of print. On Yay! the good end or bad end, you can still get it. Burn! <laughs> Um, um, take it as you will, I suppose. I got it second hand for Christmas because my brother loves the series and he wanted me to get stuck into it. Sorry, Christian. 
Hey, give it back to him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, okay. um, was, oh, I had actually something reasonable to say for once. It's gone. Oh, it's back. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I did think that in a very, you know, in a general sense, that it could have been way condensed, but I did think the story of how they all ended up where they were was interesting. Yes. But I think that, you know, it was so nicely summed up in the first two chapters. I think it would have been much better if the story kind of progressed in a linear time fashion. Uh -huh. And, you know, as it went along, little bits were revealed along the way of what happened and how they all got to that point. Rather than stating it all and then going backwards. And then going backwards, because you're like, yeah, I, well, I know how it ends now. Mm -hmm. So really, how invested can I be when I'm... You told me what happens. You told me everything that happens. So... Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so I think we're uh, we're going to go down for uh, out of five stars. How many would you give? Out of five, two. Yep. Yep. Two. Two. We're at two. Two. And the only reason why I gave it two is because there were some really interesting elements, concepts. So, yeah, some and interesting concepts, and I liked the setting. The setting. Um, and I I liked Nick's character. I wish there was more of it. Mm. Um. And the writing was easy. I, I gotta say, one of the reasons why I give it two instead of one is because it's a quick read. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, I'm glad I got that over with. Yeah. <laughs> On with my day. <laughs> um, yeah, but the other thing that I thought was an interesting concept, again, was, you know, the various legal and ethical dilemma of zone implants. Yes. And gaps. And, but, and gaps. And I just, that I, was I thought that was kind of a cool thing to throw in there. So. Yeah, that was, it was like that, and the setting, and, you know, various little hints of minor, there might be a character here, but you're going to have to wait four books to see if you're right, and then when you're wrong, you'll hate yourself for wasting all this time. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, two. So, two. Two all around. I'd say two, but I still don't recommend reading it. That's the... Yeah, yeah I'm going to read two. It's, it's okay. Don't waste your time. It's... There are other things you could do with three hours. Yeah, there are better sign Build a shelter for there. the homeless. I don't know. <laughs> Support your local authors. That's what I suppose. Yeah, do not! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I think that's everything. Oh, wait! Forget to pick out the next book! <laughs> oh, <laughs> as, as guest of honor, would you like to pick oh, out? Oh, sure, why not? Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, oh, you're going dun, to love dun. this. I am. Rogue Random by Yay! Jennifer Tolkien. <laughs> so that will be book for episode five. Uh, next week we are reviewing the movie Cemetery Man with special guest Jeff Gander. Jeff? Jeff, because <laughs> apparently I can speak. With special guest Jeff Gander. <laughs> wow, glad you're not driving. <laughs> Okay, that's it. We're great. Are you sure? <laughs> Good as relative. <laughs> There's the end.